In last week's video, I started the long drive back to South Italy from England. In this episode, I receive an enthusiastic welcome home and get right back into life in Positano. Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road, but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. And we arrived at Celine's house. That was easy enough. That was just two and a half hour drive. Celine is currently not here at the moment. Do you want the ball? Celine's currently not here, so she's left with the keys. I've hung her washing out for her. And I'm just gonna sit here and play with Indy in the garden and plan where I'm going next. We've come out for lunch and spent the afternoon here and then set off another two and a half hour drive after this. So I'm gonna enjoy my time with my friend. We left Celine's house, we drove for about two and a half hours and we're halfway home. We've stopped off at this little sort of camping village place because I'm tired and don't think I can make it all the way home. Doing the obligatory dog walk before it gets too dark. Yes, we are at free. <laughs> Where do you want? Where do you want? I thought I would um, give you a reality check here. So yesterday was fabulous. Tonight, I'm eating eight hour scrambled eggs on toast with red peppers, cold out of a box, in the dark, because I can't find a light switch outside, in a pokey little room, about an hour away from Rome. I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. <laughs> it's the next morning. It is 10 to eight in the morning, and I'm on my way home. We're on the last stretch and I have just pulled onto the motorway and we are completely at a standstill <laughs> in early morning traffic and apparently there's a crash ahead. It's moving a little bit. So yesterday when I left Cormayer and started driving back through Italy, I noticed that a lot of lorries were beeping as I went past and I started to worry that there was something wrong with the car. I thought that maybe something was stuck in the door or there was some black smoke coming out or there was something that they were trying to avert me and let me know that there was some problem. And I nearly pulled over at a service station. Um, and then I got to Celine's house and didn't really think about it. And then when I left Celine's house yesterday afternoon, it happened again and these lorries were beeping as I went past. And, then I, and I knew there was nothing wrong with the car because I checked it over. And I started to think, is it just men? Is this just typical Italian men? And I've just been talking to Celine and I asked her, I said, um, do you have this problem or is it just me? Or is there something wrong with my car? And she was like, oh no, that's just Italian men. They're just beeping as you go past. I mean, honestly, in 2022, they still do that. I'd never noticed it before, normally because Carlo's driving, and of course, it's not gonna be for him. But on my own, in the car, driving through Italy, I have been honked at so many times that it has made me worry that I have a problem with my car. That is not funny. Anyhow, I'm less than two hours from home. I'm very excited to get back. I'm going to meet Carlo in the car park and I think we're gonna go and have some, a celebratory lunch together. Cause I have not had a, well okay, yes I had a meal out yesterday with Celine, but it was only a salad. And I have not actually had any food apart from what I brought with me from England. I brought enough food for the journey and it's kept me, <laughs> kept me alive, kept me going. Apart from the salad I had yesterday at Celine. So I'm really looking forward to a good meal. Close. So close. I'm just outside Sorrento and there's a massive traffic jam.
Ehi, amore! Oli, vieni qua, non ti buttare in mezzo alla strada. That nearly killed me carrying that lot down. Carlo's got some more stuff. We've left all the jams up uh, near the road. I'll get them another time. And I can't get in because I've got the keys. Let me home. Me. conquered my fears I drove across Europe to England and back and it was easy I had a really really fun time really enjoyed myself uh, I, I was really inspired to actually do more I wanted to keep going and easy it easy Indy was really really good in the car she was no problem at all hello you've been such a good girl haven't you you were a well-travelled puppy. Yeah. But yes, we had an absolutely lovely time. I will definitely be doing again. It might become an August tradition for me. So while I was away, I had a phone call from Skye and she was like, Mommy, bad news. And I was like, what's happened? Have you been fired from work? And she went, not that bad, but bad anyway. You're going to be angry. I was like, okay, what have you done? And she had accidentally smashed my rather expensive olive oil bottle. So when we redid the kitchen back in February, I'll put the link to the video here, we, I budgeted exactly how much money I was going to spend on the kitchen. I came in quite a lot under budget. So I treated myself to a beautiful olive oil, handmade, hand-painted olive oil bottle. And it was from Casa e Bottega down in Positano. And we had it for a good three months before Sky accidentally smashed it. And she went to Cousin Bottega and she explained to lovely Tanina who owns the cafe what had happened. And Tanina helped her choose one to replace it and then didn't let her pay. So this is my new olive oil bottle. It's very similar to the other one, same colors, but just a slightly different design. It's absolutely beautiful and uh, we're both very very grateful to Tanina that Skye gets to save her pocket money and I get to have another olive oil bottle. <laughs> so I'm actually going to go to Casa e Bottega today for, lu for lunch, for let's say second breakfast. So I'm going to meet Elizabeth. I've been down to see her once already since I've been back but we didn't have much time together so we're going to meet up for breakfast today and I thought I would take you with me and show you some of the other ones and what else they have there because they have just such beautiful stuff there. I know all the Holly fans are wanting to know where is she? How come we can only see Indy? Because Holly is short. This is the problem. Look, she's right there. <laughs> she's just small. Aren't 
Pretty little one. Here's Elizabeth, we're back together <laughs> and we're just waiting for a table because it is rather busy in here. Like my friend Peg! <laughs> You might be able to guess by my outfit what I'm doing today. Mariana has a day off and Elizabeth has asked me to come down and give a hand sending off all the boat trips, so that's what I'm doing. So it's currently about eight o'clock in the morning and lovely and quiet. A lot of people presume that September is much quieter than August. Unfortunately, it's not. It's just as busy here. Um, the only difference is the people. In August, it's a lot of Italians on their August summer holiday. Whereas in September, it's all the people who thought it'd be a good idea to go on holiday in September because all the kids are back at school. But there's a lot of them. So it's very, very busy in September with people without kids. There is nobody there. I wonder if they're all having breakfast. Let's go check. Any morning lemon delivery. Look at this. Yeah, Malfi Coast lemons. Oh, those are apples. <laughs> those are the lemons. Strawberries and pizza boxes. I doubt there's pizzas in them. Every boat has a fruit bowl in it and we're just taking some fresh fruit so I'm going to deliver this to all the boats so Somebody's going to come and pick me up and take me around all the boats and we'll drop off their fruit for them. Buongiorno da Positano. Vi auguro una buona giornata a tutti dalla splendida Positano, da Pasquale. Buona giornata. Da quanti anni sei qua a Positano? Delivery number one and two, by the way. And maybe even three. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, look who's in that boat over there. Saluti. <laughs> There's really not much of a better way to wake up first thing in the morning, have a hurried breakfast, run down to the beach, and then you're shoved on a boat to go and make deliveries. I mean, this is just wonderful. This is, people would pay to do this, wouldn't they? I'm sure they would. Anyhow, we've got one more boat to deliver breaks to and then back on land where we'll be checking people in for all the boat trips they're going out on today. And 
with our last delivery of the day, not the red boat, which is Sea Lady, the original boat, the Blue Star, but Spritz Duer, which is this one here. Who do we have on board? Mirko. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Here we Grazie. go. <laughs> Buona giornata. Ciao, Mirko. What a difference half an hour makes. There was nobody down here when I arrived at eight and now it's half past eight and all the people are here waiting to get their ferries. That's it. There you go. Have a nice day. The other great thing about this job is by about half past 10 in the morning, I'm actually all finished and go home and go do whatever I want. I spent most of the morning just back and forth between the little booth here and the jetty where the boats leave from, which is behind, you can't really see it, behind me over there. Um, I'm very thankful that there is no sun this morning. It's quite cloudy, so it's not too hot. I'm about to do my last one, I think, taking a group of people over for the group tour to Amalfi. This is just a little transfer boat that will take them out to the big boat that they will be on today. We would not send 12 people off on a boat like this. Documents? See <laughs> lady. So the way it works is the big boats have to queue up to come and dock here. And if we look out behind this boat at the moment, how many are out there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, I can see at least six boats, there's another one coming in. So the way it works is the boats have to call the Coast Guard, they have to get permission and they are given a time slot when they can come into the jetty to more to pick up the people and then depart. So that's why there's a big queue of boats out there at this time in the morning. And this is why Blue Star has started just using the little transfer boat because it can quickly sneak into the front of the jetty where it's a bit shallower, the big boats can't pull in there load everybody on and take them out and then they can climb onto the bigger boat for the tour. Okay. So how was August without me? <laughs> uh, long, very long. It was a long month, wasn't it? Yeah. No, it was very hot, very humid and very crowded and I was very jealous. <laughs> Come with me next year. Yeah, I would love to. I told Pepper, let's close in August and just leave. Close but for the whole month. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, we were very busy. You know that there was uh, Lenny's birthday, which was lovely on the Yeah, beach. I miss Lenny's birthday. And um, we had, but we do so many things the whole year. So yeah. yeah, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then there was the fifteenth of August, which is a really nice period here. Like, uh, well, we saw holiday. a bit of your video from yeah. from the the market stalls, which they set up right next to the yes. little booth here. So it's the like, candy shop it's is like next. Buy to your me. tickets to Capri, buy your trips on the Amalfi Coast, and then go and get sweets and candy and <laughs> yeah. nuts and things. <laughs> yeah, it was nice that Carlo came down. Um, yeah, we had a nice evening just having pizza and enjoying the atmosphere the girls enjoy it because you know yeah. we don't have so many things happening here in general in this little village so for them it's a big highlight no? mm. and then yeah I was very busy very humid really I suffered this year a lot the humidity because the clouds were like coming down until the beach and I had to change three times the t-shirt you know yeah how it is. yeah and then a lot of people, a lot of day tourists coming by ferry boat. Sometimes, yeah, it was like, yeah, a little bit uh, for me, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, very, very busy still, but it's a different people now, isn't it? This is more. Yeah, I think you can feel that school started everywhere. So the tourism. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we start on Tuesday. Yay! And um, yeah, but still, it's another way of tourism. Yeah, different types of uh, clients and yeah. um, more relaxed, honestly. And yeah, September is beautiful. But I, don't you think that the moment when we have 15th of August, it changes? It like changes. the peak was here, and then everybody is like, we can see the light at the tunnel. It yeah, goes. I think from the 15th of August, there's like hope that the end is near. And then from the end of August, where there's always a big thunderstorm, always, without yeah. fail, on the 31st of August, a big thunderstorm, and then the light changes. changes. 
and I just love September. Boating yeah. in September is incredible. It's yeah. like silver. Yeah. We went to discover without you <laughs> a new place, but I will bring you. We want to go there. Uh, Chetara, where we went in winter. Yeah. We just went to this little beach club, which Rosie really loved because it's an unbelievable clear sandy beach, which is not, not normal here. And yeah, beautiful place, different area. The coastline changes a little bit there. It's more rocky and yeah, it was very I've nice. Never been in summer. Yeah. So we're going to try and do next something week, yeah. next week and take you out on a little excursion along the coast to yeah. somewhere where we haven't been before. Yes. And I'm happy you're back! <laughs>